Good morning, welcome back, and happy new year. You know, now that it's the new year, I've been thinking recently, remember back in the day when we were actually happy? That might be a generalization, but there was a time back in the day when we weren't holding a phone and staring at a screen for seven to eight hours a day. After the invention of the smartphone, our screen times went up by 2000% and our ability to focus and pay attention to anything longer than a one minute TikTok vanished into thin air. Babies born today already have starting equipment and they can't even hold their necks upright. An iPad in one hand, an Apple watch on the other. They can probably reset your internet router when someone over the age of 50 asks them to. I'm telling you, He's a real genius with this type of stuff, like a young Bill Gates. Now we live in an age where any thoughts we have are instantly shareable to millions of people, which is actually pretty neat how we can make friends and talk to random strangers across the world. But you know what they say, most of us ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. Like she was looking kind of dumb with her finger and- oops, sorry, got carried away. But people are starting to act even dumber than usual. If it gets you internet clout, gone are the days of keeping your thoughts to yourself and having a secret. If you did share your secret, which I don't recommend doing since you can't just be trusting anyone's armpit, and your secret of wearing the same underwear three days in a row. You'd only tell that to your close friends in real life, which is like three, six people max. But with how the internet economy works and our need for money to fulfill basic needs, like being alive, pretty much anything is monetizable if you're smart about it. Really simple things that no one would care about before can make you a pretty nice bag from our collective social media bosses. I can wash my dishes. Huh? You can put it right in there. Uh you remain completely dry. I'm definitely not getting a raise this year since I forgot to get YouTube a Christmas present. They're already so rich, what else can I get them? Maybe, I don't know, better treatment for their creators? Just kidding. There is a lot of online income to be made and everyone wants a piece of it themselves. By sharing our wackiest moments in our day-to-day -day life, you can build up a following and live pretty comfortably if people find you entertaining. Like, um, some sort of jester from the Middle Ages. Hey, a place to sleep, food to eat, and a chance to live past the age of 30? Maybe the clowns were onto something. There's a term that's been going around as a result of brain rot from consuming too much internet called chronically online, where all your coherent thoughts come from a Reddit forum and really bad Twitter takes, which sounds like one of the worst people to hang out with. If we were stuck in a moving elevator together, I would build a window like I was playing Fortnite and uh, jump out. Oh my God, my boss was being so stupid at work today. It's actually pretty ableist to call people stupid. Giving disabled people assistance is ableist because it insinuates that disabled people aren't just as able as non-disabled people. Yikes. Okay, well this is setting up everyone to never help anyone when they need it. And I'm pretty sure not all disabilities are visible. If I saw someone with no arms, no legs, no eyes, lips, nose, trying to get a glass of water, I'm not sure why they're outside alone in the first place. But what am I supposed to do? Not help them? I don't think it's really that deep. The corn maze of a thought process to come to this conclusion even had me confused. Meeting IRL mutuals at college? Y'all, this is crazy. I remember back in the day, we used to call them friends. Like five years ago, there's something about using internet terms in real life, unironically, that is uh, very unsettling. Hello, IRL mutual. My name is WolfBloodMoon23 on Twitter, but you can call me Dave. Oh my God. How did you find me? A study showed that the average US adult spends at least 44 years of their life staring at screens. Spending half your life flipping through Instagram and scrolling through TikTok can really make a person delusional. You start losing touch with reality and how the real world actually works. Future lawyers are gonna use terms like your honor, their client is being very sus, can we vote them out? And doctors will tell someone they had a glow up after a round of antibiotics. I know we always joke around about leaving your house at least once a week to go outside and touch some grass, but I don't think it's a joke anymore. Especially with jobs where you have to interact with the general public. None of this internet nonsense as the Old Krusty likes to say, oh, and people from an older generation. Old Krusty is the voice that talks to me when I'm trying to sleep. Back in the day, you would go to your regular job and clock in. Do your work for four hours, pretend to do your work for another four hours, go home, call it a day, and think to yourself, wow, life sure is great. I love having privacy and my coworkers not knowing anything about me. But when you have a phone that can record video and a Wi-Fi connection, you might get that itch to share the silly little shenanigans you get up to at work. I'm so sorry, I asked for this hot. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Let me just, let me just remake that for you really quick, okay? <gasps> Thank you.
Do you guys post of this? In public? In front of everyone's salad? Hey, I'm all for having fun at work and being weird with your coworkers to make the time pass faster. Studies show that's the best way to prevent yourself from quitting on the spot. Like, I wouldn't have stayed at my retail job for five years if the people I worked with weren't fun. But, um, you better hope that your boss lives off grid and doesn't have a data plan. Or you have them blocked on every social media account. Maybe the company did do you dirty and scarred you from working at a coffee shop ever again. This is also a great way to increase your chances of never getting hired ever again. Like you know how brands are starting to become sentient beings with TikTok and Twitter accounts? They are watching your every move and probably listening to our conversation through our phones. Which explains why I got a lot of ads for K-pop merch and online therapy. For Zoe? Um, which one's oat milk? Yeah, so if you open your Okay, that was kind of funny. But the sequel for this TikTok went from a comedy to a drama slash thriller. Yeah, um... I hope you guys enjoyed that because I'm outside my Starbucks. I'm about to get fired. Sarah. Hi. Alexis. Oh, nope. Okay, well, um, th they got fired. The backstory is that Starbucks saw this TikTok and didn't know that it was a joke. Which, yeah, HR departments and CEOs not understanding the younger generation's humor, what's new? But the people that own these companies are middle-aged white grandpas with generational wealth. You think they find this type of content you posted on a public space funny? When they get their humor from networking and LinkedIn status updates. Everyone was doing dumb stuff at work back in the day. They were just better at hiding it because they didn't share everything about their lives to strangers online and to their actual boss. You also have people saying, well, if brands and companies were smart, they would love the free marketing and exposure from these viral TikToks. Give these employees a raise and pay them for their creative services. I don't know about you, but this video with coffee splatter across the room doesn't really make me want to order a Starbucks. Now, if he threw a matcha latte on the other hand, then I might be convinced. This reminds me of that person on TikTok that quit their job because they didn't like working for them anymore, which is pretty standard and normal. They then proceed to take all the documents that they made for the company while working for them because they claim that it was their intellectual property that the company paid you to make, and something about setting boundaries with your employer. Oh, they also told the person that reached out after they basically stole business documents that they could have the files back if they paid for them. It has been less than 24 hours since my last day at work. On my way out of work, I took all of the training documents that I created because they didn't have, honestly, a lot of things digitally, physically, systemically before me. And when I asked for even just a title change, no financial whatever, I just wanted some recognition. They said no, because it would be too confusing. And so that's why I took my documents with me. Clearly they don't value me, they don't actually appreciate me, um, and they don't know, you know, what I do. Because if they did understand what I do, then they would appreciate me, they would have no choice. And so it's been less than like a day since I left, and what are they doing? asking. So you are setting boundaries by doing this. It's giving boundary in the form of an 8x8 metal cage with concrete walls and a toilet next to your bed. Jail. I'm talking about a jail cell. You can't even find the full version of this TikTok anymore. Not sure if a lawsuit happened, since there was a lot of free evidence for the business to use to sue, or maybe they realized that digital footprints are very real and businesses do background checks by searching up your social media. They just debuff themselves with the unemployable stat by posting all of this online. It'd be like hiring someone with a previous history of being Catwoman to be an overnight security guard for a museum made out of diamonds and Mona Lisa paintings. And I mean, you never really know how management is going to act. They might be fine with their staff making content if it's tasteful, but you are putting yourself out there to possibly be fired. If I wasn't doing my job at work, I'd keep that between myself and my coworkers. But have you ever noticed, why is there so much drama in the food industry? Sometimes you just want to order waffles on a Tuesday afternoon, but the employees are too busy playing Super Smash Brothers with the customers. Okay, I'm not even sure if I can show this, but a quick Sparks Note version, there was a fight at a Waffle House, and one of the customers threw a chair at one of the employees, and she deflected it like she was in a video game. Y'all about to go to jail, you wallet! Oh my god, what, what just happened? So there's no context on what started this fight, but 
All I know is that I'm on her side. Looks like the customer threw the chair first, but Waffle House just saw fighting and this employee got fired after. Uh, wh what was she supposed to do? Just let it hit her in the face? You can't cook waffles with a broken face. She wasn't even the one recording. She was busy deflecting and parrying a projectile from an enemy. That is a quick time event right there. I'm gonna give you a write up because you threw the sugar shaker and it broke. Um, but that's really about it. I'm glad you held your own type thing. I was blacklisted. So it was kind of like, I can't ever work for Waffle House again. I tried working for another one, um, like sometime earlier this year. And I had found out that I was blacklisted. But see how posting a harmless, ish video had such a big chain reaction of events. It caused me to watch this at least 10 different times. So sharing ics about your partner, your family, people you see in your day-to-day -day life, and posting it for everyone to see is the new trend. We're not kink shaming here, but I believe it's called public humiliation or something. We get to see people in relationships show the worst sides of their partner. Did you shower? Yeah, why are you filming? Did you wash your body? Yes. Why? Okay, that's it. No, what are you doing? What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't use that. Mm -hmm. I didn't use that either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what? What did you use? <laughs> the water. You didn't use any soap. I used the water. Why you, you need to use soap. How did you wash your ass? No soap? Sorry, I, I can't tell if my eyes are dry or irritated from smelling this TikTok. Glad to see straight couples that create content about being a couple, being normal. Yeah, this seems about right. What would compel you to post this online? Other than to make money and get followers, but at what cost? A thousand bucks for your dignity? At least get a sponsor for this type of content. I also feel like after she posted this and turned off her camera, she's probably gonna go share the same bed with her boyfriend. So everyone loses in this situation? I know that when you open their bedroom door, the humid air will hit you like a weighted blanket. There's like a whole ecosystem underneath their sheets. But that's not the main topic for this part of the video. You ever see healthcare professionals that went to school, studied for years to get a degree, only to make TikToks while operating on someone? Is this allowed? Actually, it's not really that deep for people to post themselves dancing and having fun at their workplace. But sir, there is a body in front of you that's about to become a corpse if you don't put down that phone. So a handful of nurses decided to share their ics about their job. Just something lighthearted. Nothing like, I hate how we're overworked and underpaid for the amount of work we have to do. We need to reform the entire healthcare system. Ew. But more along the lines of, I hate the patients I'm trained and paid to take care of. My ick is when you come in for your induction, talking about, can I take a shower and eat? What? <laughs> Wait, <laughs> who said what? What? Was it her coworker? Even she was like, huh? You don't want to give a patient basic necessities for a living? I don't know, girl. Seems a little cruel. And this is just the first ick. My ick is when you ask me how much the baby weighs and it's still, and it's still in your hands. Dad comes outside and asks for a paternity test right outside the room door. Saying you don't want any pain medicine, no epidural, but you are at an 8 out of 10 pain just to serve a deal. We've already told you to push the call light, but every five minutes, your Excuse family me. member coming Excuse at me. the front Excuse desk. Me. Can I have some water? Ask you for something else. Excuse me, can I have a blanket? <laughs> Another ick. When you're going room to room between one baby mama and your other baby mama. Oh no. Ick. <laughs> it's the unlimited trips to the nurse's station for me. Well, are we really surprised when some of the meanest people you meet in high school become nurses? The bully to nurse pipeline is so interesting. Someone should do a study on it. Thank you to all the other nurses that are working 12 hour days and aren't awful. Like this is just a small handful of nurses that made all the good nurses that do their job properly look bad. Why do people always have to wreck things for everyone? It's like my mom always says, it's cause you're always on that damn phone. I don't really know anything about being a healthcare worker, but damn, don't you guys have rounds to do and affairs to have in the nap room 
According to Grey's Anatomy, not everything needs to be posted online. Just because we have the ability to, doesn't mean we have to. Nowadays, it's really easy for a collective group of dumb opinions to grow into bigger and dumber opinions, since everyone has access to share whatever they're thinking on social media. Hey, talk about your job all you want, like any other person with a job. You're not always gonna love your 9 to 5 that pays your bills, but if you're gonna vent about it, do it privately. It is so normal to rant about things you hate about your job in your own head and not in a public space. Well, if that's not a sign to decrease my screen time, go outside and pick up a new hobby, I don't know what else to say. I hope someday we can go back into the dark ages of not spending an entire workday on our phones, having secrets, and not sharing every little thing we do online. Or not. I feel like eventually we're all gonna start sharing our bank account numbers and our blood work results. I need to show everyone I got a good grade on my test. I got an A+. Plus. I got a negative zero. And we couldn't do all of this without our corporate overlord, YouTube. Make sure to feed its algorithm with a like and leave a comment for dessert and engagement. That way I'll get to pop up on your recommended when I upload. And I'm gonna get YouTube a Christmas present this year. I am not forgetting this time. Can someone put an alarm that'll go off in like 300 days? Just as a little reminder, have a good day, try not to be dumb, and I'll see you in the next one.